Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today what I really wanted to do is cover how do you play Watson pretty much solo? How do you win your ones? And better yet, how do you win your 1v3s? I figured the best thing was to show an example of a game that we want as Watson. Did this live on stream here on YouTube. Then we're going to cover a game where I lost as Horizon. Showcase the mistakes I made, but also the clutches that we also made. Now the biggest tip I can also provide to you guys is honestly a legend who does not have mobility that you're finding as Watson is going to be the most difficult. Legends that have an out such as Pathfinder, Wraith, Pathfinder can get away with his tactical, Wraith can get away with her tactical by going into phase, but as a Watson, you really only have to rely on your positioning and guessing where the encounter is going to take place. Now the first tip I can provide is to drop hot. Drop where the action is going to take place. I know that you're going to get less loot, but you're have, going to have to get your loot off of enemies. And the reason why you're going to choose to go into these more difficult encounters like the ones you see here, others also do it, like that guy was very much clearly solo, is when you make this decision, it means that you're going to get lost in the shuffle of things. You're going to be harder to identify what team that you're a part of, and you're going to increase your chances of survival. It's that herd mentality, getting into the mix of things, and isolate your 1v3s. So what we did here is we got one knock, but I know there's two more remaining, so I'm going to try to find and isolate them out. So I decide to go back to my main armor and top off, but also keep an eye on the knocked guy, because that's great bait. Great way to bait the enemy team out, and I finish them before they go for the res. I could have waited for the res, it's also another thing you can do. Um, go for Because you know at least one of them is out of commission. But I'm also trying to wait to make sure that there's not two down there. So I drop down and just kind of go for the for the sw swap here and I try to flank behind to see if, if they're there but I do get the knock and I reset immediately the immediately when you get your knock you don't want to stay near your knock but you want to stay within range to hear for a res to know if you can go in on that and keep in mind that most individuals another way to counter this is to bait the res you might pretend to go for a res but it also baits the enemy to push out so make sure you play that smart and to kind of use those signals if you hear audio still going off or just kind of secure your kill and finish it off. You, mo mobility is huge in terms of wall bouncing like you saw there just to make yourself more difficult to hit. And it does secure the three kills, and now four kills technically, early on in the game and already kill leader as a solo. Now the thing is that Watson plays great in buildings, so hanging by buildings is going to be more ideal than hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Because at least you have that as your advantage. Grab weapons that are going to be strong mid-range and close range if you have that long range game and you really know how to land those shots with a longbow then i definitely encourage you to do so but your loadout is really really important because you need to be able to clutch out those that damage you can need strong entry damage which is going to come from your wingman or longbow but you also need to be able to have consistent damage to finish up the lock the knock essentially if you're using an r301 a flat line a volt r99 and then for the burst, you'd go for like a Mastiff PK, and even Wingman can be used for close range for getting that consistent damage. So we're going to skip ahead for the next encounter. So what happened here is I'm trying to get it to the mix of another fight. I want to just sneak up, up another, on another team, ideally here. So I do rotate in. I put fences, and the reason why I'm putting fences here and I leave them behind is I never know when I need to run away. And that's going to be my way to kind of gate them through it. So most, most people are always asking on stream, why was I putting fences in random spots? Is because I intend to run back through that way. And if I run back through that way, you're going to see it in a second. So I knock this, but if that guy's an instant and there's two down below, I don't know the number of the situation, so I decide to back up. I didn't complete my fence earlier, but if I did have the fence here and they decided to full eight me, I would have the fence right here to be able to assess. And the thing is, you always have to make sure that they don't know you're alone. If they know you're alone, that means that you're in trouble. And the same thing if you're playing with your teammates trying to win your 1v3s. If they know that you're isolated, they're going to push you because they know they have confidence in winning that encounter. So I'm trying to assess if this Wraith that I just ran into is by herself or she's with a team. At first I thought she was by herself, but it does turn out she is with the team. So I decide just to kind of reassess and back up and find a new position here. We're going to skip ahead. I run far away, and I do see one of them decides to run up, and I'm holding here to see if one will make a mistake. Your goal is to make sure the team is making a mistake, and I decide to run away. And the reason why is, even if I were to knock that ash, I want to get more into the mix and this, the shuffle that's going on over here, and this ash does decide to rotate back. So I know that they're going to get involved. That means there's nine participants here, because these guys just showed up, from my understanding. Because they were already fighting unless they already shot, and that's just a misjudgment on the VOD. But you can review your VOD to see when do you engage and when you don't. So the question here of when do you engage is when can I cross without being caught out? 
by the team. What geometry can I use here? So I'm going to use the, the inside cover here because I'm at a better strategic advantage. And if I need to cut away, I need to cut away at an angle. And unfortunately, I whiffed my shots, but I almost got it. But because I almost got it, but I don't know where they're at, I decide just to rotate. Because the team up top decided to disengage. And this is the hardest part that you have to discover every once in a while, is did a team disengage? And when they both disengage, that means they're going to try to find you out as what third party and what what are they doing? And you see the Bloodhound just does scan. And for this always happens. This is it, It's just how people think. They'll disengage and they'll start to find, okay, who's the solo? Who's the one out in the open? And then everyone starts to focus you as the primary problem. And that's just because you're the one who's making the push and the instigating the situation. Now, in this next encounter, what you're going to see is through just sheer rotation, I unfortunately do run into another team. So the team that I do run into here, let's just skip and how I get into it. I, do, I literally accidentally run into this Octane, and this is going to happen. Luckily, the other teams were a little bit further away, and I do manage to get the knock. So the plus side here is I get the knock after whiffing a few shots. If I got the shots a little sooner, I probably could have clutched something out. And because I missed those shots, I decide to rotate. Because if I stay there, I saw one pushing up on me. So I need to isolate them out. Is one of them going to push me? I guess like a big dum-dum and make a mistake? I don't know. I decide to test the waters, go for a little bit of damage here. They fry me, and that means that I'm low, and the other guy may push. If he does, that's probably the best situation for me in this current spot. Because if he makes a mistake, that means I can catch him out. And then there he is around the corner, and I'm trying just to see, and he decides not to hold, and I just hunker down. Now, I do see him outside this window, and that pretty much creates an opening. This is all you can do, and this is the worst possible situation, but if you're a caustic, a defensive legend, your goal is just to hold out. Because I saw him shoot out there, I'm like, is he still over here? And I assess, they're all over there, and they're going for the res. I'm not going to be able to 1v2, one, one especially with that Loba and her consistent damage. I leave. It's not worth staying anymore. If the Loba has competent aim that I just saw that she did, it means if she dishes 100 damage to me and I, let's say I full one mag, the Loba doesn't matter because the Mirage is going to come in and only has to do like 100 damage. And any player within, I mean, look at the MMR that we're playing at with Preds and Masters and Plats and Diamonds in these lobbies, and you know, it's going to be a lot more difficult. You know that these people are going to land their shots. It's not going to be that simple. So I decided to go do another rotation here just to get out and find my footing and positioning. I do catch out that there is a team fighting, and it's a little bit further because I cut through Geyser here, and I see her shots all the way on the other side. And I decide to see, can I get involved? That's another question. So I decide to take height, and I hear them fighting further up above on the left side. So if I were to pause that here, I'm going to showcase what I see. Through a first glance, do I see anything? I know I hear the shots still, and then I identify Boom. There's one guy on the roof. There's nobody in the, in the area. He's looking down. There must be one team down below, but I'm waiting to see if there's somebody there. So what I decided to do, try to get some entry damage here, and I do with 123 damage, but he dropped down. What does that mean for me? That means that he dropped down to go for safety, but I didn't see any other teammates. Are they all down below? I don't think they are, so I decide just to kind of reassess, and I see some light ammo because I'm definitely low. And there they are. So you see that the teammates weren't that far away, but I'm able to get some damage in. The hard part that anybody has to deal with in these scenarios is that if all three of them are in front of you, and even if you were to dish out a lot of damage, which you're going to see consistently here, so boom, 90 and get the crack, is that even if I knock the one really far away, I have to deal with the Bloodhound here, and I think he's over on the right. Uh, they're over uh, on the right. Sorry, it's a Bloodhound. So they, they are over on the right-hand side corner over there. I have to watch out for them because the scan is out and now they know I'm isolated and by myself. They have identified that I'm a solo. But I do dish out 179 damage. I am somebody to be trifled with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to peek and go for a grenade here in just a second. I'm trying to get that damage. I see they're still fighting, so I definitely could if the Bloodhound, if they make a mistake. And they do, and I'm able to get one of them caught out. Yeah, he died to ring. Uh, they died to ring. And it was pretty easy. Which one? Was it the Bloodhound or was it the Pathfinder? Okay, the Pathfinder is up. Sorry, I got confused. So he is alive and Bloodhound, they are still alive. Double checking. Okay, so let me let me pause. Let's go back. Let's let's go back because even I'm getting confused in this encounter. I just want to double check. So the Bloodhound, they ran away. Let's see how much damage they had. The Bloodhound, they went down. Okay, so the Pathfinder, he over here in this corner is still alive. Now I lost track of the third, and that's the problem. 
That's that's a confusing part. If I do not know where the third is, that is the problem. The zone is closing. This is level two zone. If level zone, uh, two zone is closing, I have a lot to really worry about here because I'll take damage. I'll push in. Even if I lose, let's say like a quarter of my health, that puts me in a disadvantage. So Pathfinder is resing Bloodhound and Bloodhound can literally get up and they can scan and then I'm then pretty much dead. And this person who's rotating, I didn't know if this Ash was a part of their team. I actually thought it was an Octane when I was on stream. I'm pretty sure I called them an Octane and I was just confused what team they're part of, part of so I decided to wait this out. Because it's it's not worth if I'm going to run into just some random people and then everyone focuses me and I wanted to win this round because I had been throwing my matches for a while. So I was going to go for the win. I was going to go for the dub. So I wait for the rotation and I managed to get a nice rotation out. I take the north side. And it's a little bit of a risk, so I put a preempt defense here just in case I need to run away. That's going to be your strength if you're a defensive legend. Create a pathway in case you need to run, like we were discussing earlier. And use your angles. Use your whatever's in there, a car, a box, anything of that nature to really help you clutch out. So I do manage to catch an Ash here on the right. I do about 70 damage, and they just pretty much panic and run away, which means I'm not going to be able to do anything. So I do grab some of the cells here. I didn't realize how low I was in cells. I could have come back. So always understand what's in your inventory because that was a mistake I made here. I didn't realize how low I was in cells until in just a minute. And you're going to see that. So let's skip ahead where I identify where I was low on cells, which I was. And I only had three. I know you only saw it quickly in my inventory. And before that, I only had one. So check your inventory i was low on light so i decided to do a clean swap on the energy weapon here which is a big decision and it actually helps in main, making sure that i clutched out this next encounter very very important i do get scanned by the bloodhound they definitely identified that i was a potential solo but i they were still fighting so i'm trying to wait for the right opportunity to go in because i don't know if that scan was for me if it's for them and then i hear them engage and i see the knocks on the kill feed and i decide to go right in for this I rush in as quick as possible trying to identify what floor they're on. They're not on the top floor, so I check down below and I be able to, um, the goal is to identify the 1v1. So I'm going to pause this. So I caught the lifeline out of position. She didn't even get a, a shot on me. Let me go back to this. I'm going to pause it as soon as I run downstairs. So you see this. It doesn't matter if you're the best player in the world or the worst. The idea is to catch them out. So I caught the lifeline out. And when you do this, you put yourself at an advantage because I only lost 50 HP. But I completely one magged him and now I'm at an advantage. Technically, I have blue armor now. Now, again, the next person is definitely just a surprise because you can tell they're popping a cell. They don't know the situation. And the less the enemy team, their information they have, the better. Now, I got the knock on that individual as well. I knew they were selling, so I decided to use... My fences and the bloodhound, they push in, and this is their big mistake. The mistake they made is because they're not using angles. They pretty much just gave me the free knock there by being out in the open. I mean, it, it, I call this the ego play. If you're going to wide swing, it means that you're confident that you're not going to miss your shots. Unfortunately, they missed their shots, and they missed their opportunity to clutch that out. And if you were in a 1v1, you don't want to be in a situation where you're gambling. There are unfortunately going to be circumstances where you are taking a shot and taking a chance at the opportunity to win your fight and encounter. But if you can get the jump and get the damage assessment off before, that's going to put you in an advantage. So what do I mean by, by that? It means by doing initial poke damage. What armor are they using? Did you manage to get at least one wingman shot in? That means that they're 45 damage lower, and that's the ideal situation that you want to be in. So... Now I know that the last person is running around, but I'm at least going to grab the resources that I need. I decided to go for the Kray Root because that is probably the best damage spike that you can get in the game. Now I'm looking for them. I don't know where they're at specifically, so I'm pretty much just doing recon work. And then I finally see that it's another Bloodhound. I'm running into a lot of Bloodhounds in this round. They are holding an angle and we're just waiting for them to make, make a mistake. And they do in a minute. This mistake was the going for the wide peak. And they're just as much trying to get entry damage as much as I am. But I have a Kraber. And I almost got a headshot. But unfortunately, just get a body shot instead. 145 screams to make a push in. I know they're batting. That's the most logical thing they're going to do in this scenario. But now, because a Bloodhound gets a scan, they know where I am at. So I'm going to hold and hunker down. Because I know the bat gave him 100 HP. Meaning I hit for 145. They do definitely have some flesh heals. I did not see if the Bloodhound, if they managed to clutch out a syringe or a med kit. I don't think they had time for that. And it does ultimately lead to my win. But that doesn't mean I'm going to push right here. right? It means that I'm going to wait for the right moment in the right encounter. 
So because of that, I decided to go for the spray and I felt more confident in my spray in that scenario because he whiffed his initial shots, even though he got the jump on me with the initial damage. I, you, you don't know whether or not they got the med kit or the syringe off, but I know that I did 145 and got a crack and that is the entry I was looking for, which clutched out for a solid solo kill win on Watson. Now let's talk about Horizon that has a lot more ability, but I still lost. And we're going to talk about that, like how will you rotate, because essentially my rotation, I just got caught out. And 9 kills, 2,900 damage. Really solid. Not too bad. Again, you'll see on the stream there are rounds that you lose consistently because you drop, you don't find a weapon, you need to rotate faster, you run into the wrong team at the wrong time, you find out they're super sweaty, they identify you're the weak one. Anything can happen, and that's kind of the, the experience, you know? But it helps you learn when to engage and when not to engage. So let's talk about the next gameplay with Horizon here in just a second. Okay, looking at Horizon now, a more mobile legend in terms of being able to tap strafe sharper than any other legend because of that aerial time that she gets, which is a huge benefit. And I do have a team contesting here. Remember I said you want to drop hot where there's going to be enemy teams. I did assess and see that there are other teams here, but unfortunately one team did decide to drop hot. And so the goal is just to loot up as fast as possible and identify where can you get your strong 1v1. And then luckily I managed to one clip the, or one mag the octane there. And now I'm at a 2v1. I do hear the res and I decide to go in on this, which is like the best thing you can do. And then boom, now two of them are down. If two of them are down, all I gotta do is reassess and I take height to try to run away. This is the, the mobility that I was talking about. And if the Wraith is coming up, this is where I can reposition, move around a little bit more and try to get as much healing in as possible to save myself a little bit of time. So I got one and then the plus side when you're playing Horizon is that when they jump down or they're taking your tactical is that their movement is a lot more predictable. That's why you use it. So if you're good at, let's say, air tracking, it's like popcorn on any of the take scenarios that you've ever used. It is sphere track on aim lab, whatever it is. It's it's a very, it's a movement that you're very much used to. And if you do it, well, that's just going to be a huge W for you. That was a nice, already clean 1v3 right off the rip that already got me kill leader. And it's due to the sheer, it happens within seconds. These decisions have to happen that quickly. So I went down, I if we reassess, I got the one mag initially. I'm going to skip right back to this. Where the one mag happened, right? Where he came out. If you don't get that one mag, you back up and reassess, right? But immediately once I heard the res after I got the initial armor here, that means, or the weapon, excuse me, that means that you have to make a push. You have to make a play to reassess. And then you have to pretty much run and just reposition as much as possible and wait for them to make the mistake, which I did. The Wraith ended up making a mistake. They definitely could have, and that point, res the Valkyrie, but they decided not to. And it pretty much led to me winning that encounter. So let's skip a little bit further because this continues to happen. There's a lot that happens here. I do see there's another team down below here. And because they're standing still, I decide to go for some entry damage. I do hear that there's somebody else zipping up. I decide to go for that damage there. I know that they're going to res. And there is a decision that I make here. And the reason I do it is because I know they're resing down below. I decide to go for the ego finisher to heal myself up. You're going to see my armor goes back to full, and the team had no time to push me. I know for a fact because they're still over there. They're over there on the left. They had no time. But that meant that at least I could have a nice fast reset and nade them out. And they're pretty much at a, at a, at a loss here, at a panic. So in this scenario, I, all I had to do is just get the resources that I need, reassess to see if I could get them to make a mistake. Just as much as they did earlier. I managed to get one isolated. And that's always the goal. I have height here, and I do identify that there's another team shooting at them. And I try to get any shots from the Pathfinder, unfortunately. Let's see if I manage to get a little bit of damage. No, I do not. It must have been some other game I was thinking of. But I do manage to get a lot of damage, and they are wearing white armor, so I do have the armor advantage. Just because I have the armor advantage doesn't mean I can just give up height and drop into two different teams, because then I will get picked on and get isolated, and I have way too many syringes, and I also have way too many cells, but I identify that in just a minute. So I decided to take height further just to see if I can catch out this enemy team and figure out what mistake they, they could potentially make. I think one of them, there's a Valkyrie definitely on the enemy team and that Pathfinder just ran and there they are rotating. Perfect. Now at this point, I think he falls into the lava and I hear the them taking lava damage. I don't even decide to drop down on it because I know I'm going to get that kill and there it is. Now I know that Pathfinder's alone. That is a 1v1. 
scenario, but that whole other team is over there in the right-hand corner, and they're also there fighting potentially above. Another team does decide to show themselves here in just a minute. And there's that Pathfinder. He decides to peek out, and because the damage is pretty low, and he messed up on blocking himself at the door, that's another 1v3 scenario. I managed to cl clutch all of them out for making a mistake, and pretty much predicting where they could be, and taking ultimate height for information. I had the team across the way, not going in on that, because if one, they got damage on me. I don't know their, their scenario and situation. I see the Valkyrie dropping, but so that means that they could push on me, and I decide to hard hold here. But because of that, I did some damage. It looks like she was just looking for resources, but her mistake, she took a lot of damage, which means that it's perfect for me to either push or hold. I have height and there's no reason for me to push. If I had grenades, I would try to push them out. There's shots from underneath. I had no idea that guy was there. Or if it's a bloodhound, if, if they, I mean, I've been running into bloodhounds all day, apparently, according to this footage. But they are very hesitant because they're taking way too much damage. I, I know I mentioned earlier there's another team on the left. And so, you know, I, you have to be really careful when you make any engagement because you never know when you're going to get thirded. And it happens more often than not, especially at this level here. You can almost always assume there's going to be a third party, and so you have to clean this up relatively quick or just anchor and hold. This enemy team doesn't even know I'm by myself. Most of these teams don't know, especially if you're just taking damage out and you're playing confidently. They, they just, they could say that you're alone and they could say, oh, they're insane and get super nervous and get afraid of like when to fight. So all I'm doing is just trying to do some damage here just to assess, but also the other team is luckily pushing in on them and I get a knock. Now, just because I get the knock, you can't push in on it. I'm trying to see if I can go for the finisher, and I think they're trying to go for a res, which is why I'm trying to peek so hard. It's a little hard to see, and there we go. There's another knock. I think that was on the same guy, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if I managed to clutch it out. Unfortunately, I don't, and the other guy is starting to push up. I also hear them down below, which is a warning sign for me not to push. Even though I really, really want to go in on this because I know I can do some damage, I just know the other team is just going to roll up right behind me. And until then, all I can do is nade. And then they're running at this point. Because they assume you're a team of three. Just play that advantage and do as much damage as you can. Remember I, I put out a video talking about your mid to long range? This is what I'm talking about. That poke damage. You can be great in a 1v1 and dance around a box all day. And be really difficult to hit. But if you can't do this mid range, dam mid -range damage, then... You're, you're practically useless because, you know, a BR is such a large map. How are you going to get any of this damage out? So I decided to come up here to see if there's any resources. I don't know what that guy was doing there. I thought the team left, to be honest. That one shocked me, so I decided just to book it. And I'm like, this isn't worth it anymore. Like, who are these who are these weirdos and why are they being so weird? So I decided to rotate out. I, I swear from earlier that I saw the other guy leave, and I thought the whole team left. I have no idea what they were thinking or why. And they decided to push me as well. Because uh, they they probably identified that I was by myself, and so all I'm looking for is a mistake by them. But the other team sh does rotate here in just a minute, and I try to get as much damage as I can so they stop well, pushing. Stop being so weird. <laughs> so I rotate down. I My light ammo situation is not great, so I need to get an elimination on a team to resource up. That's why I decided to come right back up to see if I can catch them out. Because they do start fighting again in just a moment. But it's just a matter of trying to isolate, 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 and check your resource and rotate when you need to. The zone is going to close in 2 minutes and 42, so i got plenty of time on the clock. But all I need to do is isolate. So let's skip ahead because I do make a glaring mistake here. It's not here that I die. I actually die for a really unfortunate reason. That guy does get caught out because he runs away. So it's like, when do you take your shot and when do you hold your fire? We'll talk about that in a moment. When do you want to reveal? It's whenever you can get a clear shot and clear, and do a lot of damage. Which was right there, but I missed a bit. And because of that, I decided to rotate out and reposition. Because at this point, it isn't worth it. I think one of them does slide down here, and I'm able to catch him out and do a quick finisher. It's a Wraith. Boom. And because I knocked that one, and the other team was behind, and they cleaned up their fight. There's three people above, and they probably thought the Wraith got away, and who knows what happened. And so I'm waiting to see if they'll all rush me and what they're going to do. I hope this video, again, is helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I know we're going to get to the end here because most of this is is where I'm just rotating. And I'm going to talk about, see how I'm just constantly rotating, trying to find a whole different angle to get in or if I hear a fight that I can uh, third party and become a part of. And you can push a full-on three stack if you notice that they're separate. 
if they're all on top of each other, they're all trying to hold hands, then it's not going to be worth it because you're not going to beat people who are holding hands. And I do hear the team that was above, which shocked me that I didn't think they heard me. And I'm pausing a moment because it really did shock me as I was running up. I heard them, I believe, right here. And that's when you see my movement. I'm like, oh, shoot, they really heard me. So I wait. Nobody's here. They do not have a bloodhound in, so they don't specifically throw out a scan at me or anything. But I'm just waiting. I wait, wait, wait. And this is literally how I get eliminated. It's for a really not not the best reason, you know? It's like there's only so much you can do when you're rotating. And I'm on low ground right now. I purposely chose low ground because I didn't think they were going to look down here. And as I move forward, as I still haven't made any footsteps, the Rampart does find me somehow, even though I didn't, I never saw her on the upper right. And I got eliminated. Just, just the unfortunate reality of running into just RNG, right? And so that is just the unfortunate of what you do whenever you're running to these scenarios, even though it could be a great game and everything goes your way. Sometimes RNG does happen. Sometimes you get caught out. Sometimes they do find you. They shoot you in the back. You didn't know they were there. Two people wide swing you. It's what you do in those scenarios that make you a better player so you can create more consistency. Getting better at the game doesn't mean you're going to win every time. It just means that you improve your probability of potentially getting more eliminations and doing better. So hopefully this is insightful and helpful to watch two solo gameplay, one with an immobile legend and one with a legend that has a lot of mobility. And hopefully it taught you guys a bit. So go solo queue. Go have some fun doing it. I, I think there's a lot to learn from it. It's actually a heck of a lot of fun. I've been enjoying it a lot more. As of late, there's so much that you can learn. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.